Hello Spooksters and welcome to episode 6 of Spirit and Law. Today we're going to be talking about the dark, the mysterious Ouija board. Where did it come from? What does it do? And is it a portal to another dimension? Or a fun board game? Let's dive in. It all began in February 1981. The first kind of advertisements started to happen all around and news articles started appearing here and there and it was labelled Ouija, the wonderful talking board. It was sold in uh, novelty shops and toy shops and it was uh, this strange magical device that can answer all these questions about the past, the present and maybe the future. And it promised in its description that it will never fail to amuse those that hold it and play with it. So, what exactly am I talking about? I'm talking about the Ouija board. Now, the mysterious talking board was basically sold as originally a kid's toy. A board which has the words yes, no, goodbye and a series of letters and a series of numbers. There would be also with the board this kind of a tear-shaped device that everybody basically has to put their fingers on. And through that, once you place your fingers on, you pose this question, it should start to move to a different word, different letter, goodbye, yes, hello, no. But what exactly is causing it to go to these letters? Is it just the rest of your friends playing around and moving your hands all at the same time or is it something more well more mysterious so the idea of the ouija board basically came straight out of america in the 19th century there was also an obsession at this time with spiritualism and the belief that maybe we could actually communicate with the dead so spiritualism has has been around for years in europe and it hit america hard in 1848 with uh, the prominence of the Fox sisters of upstate New York. They claimed that they received different kind of messages from spirits which moved things around and, and they actually proposed and told people that they could channel these spirits or, you know, relatives that have passed but we can get to that on a completely different episode about mediumship and channeling. I want to talk more about how this was brought across as a toy. And even today, some people will see the Ouija board as a toy. They don't see it as anything else. And why wouldn't they? It was always advertised as a children's toy. I think even even to this day, can you... I want to check if you can actually get an Ouija board on Amazon. Let me have a look here. I'm not going to buy one because, well, we're diving into that momentarily let's have a look a ouija i wonder if they could do a yes a ouija board you can go on amazon right now and buy there is there is so many different ouija boards you can buy some range from about 21 pounds some are 17 the witching hour spirit board uh classic style wooden ouija spirit boards for nine pound so that's like 12 dollars basically um, and I can get it with Prime tomorrow. It can arrive. Oh boy, I really, I really want that portal to hell. So you're probably thinking, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> I like that. That kind of went together. Anyway, let's talk more about the board. Okay, so who made this very, very popular? Elijah Bond, Charles Kennard and William H.A. had the idea to turn a board into a toy. They filed the first patent for the game they called the Ouija board, which looked and operated much like the talking boards in Ohio, and the patent was granted in 1891. The name, according to Kennard, came from uh, using the board, and it was an ancient word meaning good luck. Because, you know, if a board tells you it's going to be good luck, it surely is going to be good luck, right? <laughs> so back in that day, it was actually retailed at $1.50 cents compared to today it's a little bit more expensive um so <laughs> once this kind of went into production and so forth kennard actually left the company in 1891 and uh the kennard novelty company became the ouija novelty company and william fooled an employee there eventually took over production of the boards in 1901 he made all the boards under the name Ouija, which Floyd, Flood, I think it's Flood, said came from a combination of French and German words for yes. And uh, yeah, 
basically that's what happened that's where it's been traveling he would then go on to design many different versions of the board he actually holds more ouija patents and copyrights than anyone else in history a grand total of 21 registrations in three countries including the design for the modern planet um i'm saying it wrong aren't i planchette planchette which is what i was talking about earlier i was saying it's it's the tear-shaped thing because there was such a huge success he was like do you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna pattern it and i'm i'm gonna make so much money off of it <laughs> so in 1966 his estate was sold uh his estate sold the family business which included more than just a ouija boards to parker's brother brothers which manufactured the modern boards as we know them today. And in 1991, Parker Brothers was sold to Hasbro, which now holds all the Ouija board rights and might even... Wait, what? What? I'm just reading... Wait, Hasbro has the rights to a Ouija board? Well, that... well I hope the company's successful. It's... It's... That's why the company's so successful. <laughs> Okay, anyway, so uh, since this has become the talking board and so forth, and we we have had so many different films, I think, actually called Ouija, um, all these different horror movies, but in the horror movies, they always have, like, several characters, they're all playing with this board, and then something very strange happens, there is always something unfriendly that seems to come across the Ouija board, um, and it's always seen as maybe a demon pretending to be a relative. Now, the thing is, we don't really know what is coming through the board or who you're talking to i mean if if i was dead and i could write out a name that's not my name i would i would mess around with it and stuff you know <laughs> i would play around with it i'd pretend i was someone else john yeah sure that's me um i think even to this day the ouija board itself self hasn't even been around for about 130 years so it's probably like 125 years old so this kind of old board started out as a kid's toy, but then it started to get a reputation that wasn't the best for a talking board that communicates. So this first started when there was a book published in, uh, I think, 1919 by J.G. Rupert. He published a book called The New Black Magic and the Truth About the Ouija Board. And now in this book, he talks about how there was many doctors that had told him about three people who actually used the Ouija board and played around with it, uh, brought on a complete state of dementia. So play with it for a day, next day they got dementia. Boom. It was even the subject of a court case in the mid-1920s to determine if it was counted as a toy and should therefore be subjected to tax on an Ouija board. This is just, this is, this is wonderful. In uh, 1994, the English court actually had to try to use an Ouija board... In a murder trial. Okay. Once again, I would mess around with that board. You know, if it's there, you know. <laughs> so, um, where did it also get its bad reputation from? And what exactly are you communicating with when you open this board? Now, a lot of people may think it is just a board. But there has been a lot of different experiences which have kind of uh, been quite bad and also linked to the board. Some say it's subconscious, but mm, some things just don't make sense. So let's talk about what could really be behind the board. And now we're going to go on to the idea that what if you're trying to reach a relative, but in fact, the relative isn't even there. The relative is in fact a demon. Now I know demon are completely other topic, but supposedly there is a demon called Zozo and... This isn't an Ouija demon that is in the board. It can actually possess people who use an Ouija board by slowly gaining their trust. And, you know, pretending to be good old granny over there or a mother or dad, you know, someone you're connected to. And they, the person will not be aware that they're being possessed at the time. And Zozo may lie and pretend to be, a, you know, a spirit that's there to help you. Like, it's going to be okay. And uh, basically, no, it's it's not. It's a malevolent Ouija board demon who terrorizes and possesses those that it comes in contact with. And it will cause lots of maybe images and so forth. Now, the history of Zozo actually comes from someone called Darren Wayne Evans, who brought Zozo the Ouija board to this kind of popular knowledge when he started to talk about 
the the kind of encounter that he had with the Ouija board himself. This was originally on like a forum board. I think it was called True Ghost Tales. And um, it was like a warning that this isn't a toy. This is more than just a toy. Now, let me read you some of his experience that he had with the board. Okay, here goes. This is him. During my experiences with Ouija boards, one particular spirit always seemed compelled to make its presence known. Its name is Zozo. Today I refuse to even pronounce its name, as I believe the mere uh, pronunciation of it can cause it to manifest itself. Too many times to count, it has at first pretended to be a nice spirit, or pretend to be whoever I was trying to contact, but eventually it showed its true self, cussing me, threatening me and others present in the room. Once it actually cursed me using what looked like Latin or Hebrew and using biblical terminology. I was generally fascinated and startled by how many times Zozo showed up, even in many different states and many different Ouija boards. It always wound up being very nasty and commented freely about how it wanted to possess my girlfriends and take them to paradise. When asked where paradise was, it spelled hell. One time after Zozo was being extremely evil, I walked into my bathroom only to see my one-year-old daughter about to drown. Her mother had left her alone in the tub, just for a second, and somehow water got turned on and was overflowing. Instinctively, she had her face tilted up and was seconds from going under when I grabbed her from the water. The next day, she was hospitalised for some weird internal infection and was put in isolation for 14 days, straight as doctors tried to diagnose the illness. We almost lost her, and that was when I began to uh, suspect demon attacks and activity. Evan said that since his experience, he's uh, made contact with other people who have spoken to someone called Zozo via a spirit board. Skeptics do believe that he actually invented the whole existence of it, and it... You know, once again, it's one of those hoaxes and so forth and uh, stuff like that. But, but doing research, Zozo may actually have another name and this name may be Pazuzu, an almost 3,000 year old demon who has the body of a man and a Scorpio's tail. It's not Scorpio, it's scorpions, my bad. So, basically... Here are signs if you're ever going to use an Ouija board and I highly warn against it because you don't know what you're letting into your house. You don't know who you're talking to. If it does work, who is communicating with you? You have no clue. So here's some of the rules and here's some of the signs if you're actually talking to Zozo. It's important not to use an Ouija board if you're afraid of coming into contact with him or any demonic entity as they do tend to prey on people's fears and insecurities. So here's some signs. Number one, the mood and temperature of the room may become extremely cold. Even if Zozo doesn't directly reveal himself, he will often spell his name over and over and over again. Or call himself Zaza instead. Uh, There may be scratches that appear on the body of anyone in the residence, even if they're not participating or playing with the Ouija board. So get this, if you have a friend you know that is playing the Ouija board or wanting to, you should maybe warn them because those that do come in contact with those that have played with this wonderful, wonderful, terrible, terrible, terrible board, um, people can get hurt around you. Uh, As um, the previous person did say, his daughter pretty much almost drowned. So... So bear in mind, if this is all real, who you may be actually putting at risk. So yeah, I think we've broken down what the Ouija board is, what might be behind the Ouija board, and things that could happen to the Ouija board. My own experience is some kid at, kids at school when I was about, I'm t- trying to think here, when I was about 10, some kids at school that I knew um, all kind of played in a Ouija board for fun. And then literally the same week that that had been done, they did on a Sunday, we had three different ambulances up the school with three kids that knew the knew the people, not really, really personally, but they were they all had different injuries. One's, one uh, broke a little bone in the back of their neck, one uh, cracked their head open, and another one stopped breathing. Now, it was very, very strange. And no one knew why it happened and so forth. But if if the energy was following around these people that did play with the Ouija board, it can easily attract itself to somebody else or attach itself, I'm going to say, to somebody else. So you don't know what you're dealing with and just be very careful in the future. It may look like fun and it may look like, oh yeah, let's just play around with this thing that contacts the unknown because we are very curious creatures and we want to know what's out there but next time you think about touching a Ouija board know there might be something else at the other end that you don't really want to see
Okay, Spooksters, that's it for episode six of Spirit and Law. I do hope you have enjoyed it and the Patreons have enjoyed their special episode for January that has been delivered to them. So we have a Twitter now. So if you want to follow the Twitter, it's at Spirit and Law. Um, so if you want to follow us, by all means, feel free to. And I will see you next week with either a myth, a conspiracy or a legend or something maybe supernatural. All right, guys, see you later. Bye bye. Bye.